Hey everyone, this is Raven. Hi, how are you? I want to welcome you to this uh, amazing Women and Men of Power speaker extravaganza. We're just thrilled to be doing it. Whenever we can, we love to get with our host and be able to do things that's going to uplift them and highlight them because they're much more than a host. I mean, how many of you broadcast out there and people just look at you as a radio host? People look at you as someone that brings other people on. But, you know, that you don't have a thriving and um, a business. You're not an expert in what you do. And that's so not true. I know that as a fact for myself and for my hosts. They are experts. They're coaches. They're speakers. And they're authors. Some of them are best-selling authors. So there's so much that they have to bring. And that's why we're, we're doing this basically for them today, but also for you. So we want to ask you to sit back and relax. And again, a welcome to the show. I'm Raven, the talk show Maven, and this is the Amazing Women and Men of Power Radio Network. You can check us out, positive programming all day long, every day, all day. We're going to bring Joe on now. Now, Joe Lewis Burroughs, known to many as the Brown Bomber of market conversion and he's the president and founder of invest in you seminars.com now joe has the invest in you radio show that he does on fridays and he'll tell you much more about that as um we bring him on but one of the things i love about joe is he has a system he has a really good system and his system helps you find your missing assets. And I'm sure that's what he's going to be talking about that today because he's a financial analyst and market strategist who has served entrepreneurs and business owners for over, get this guy's 11 years. And today he's going to share his insider secrets to uncovering 30% or more in your business by leveraging hidden marketing assets that you already have. Own. Right, Joe? That's why they have to tune in to you today to um, so that you can show them. And you're the man to show them how to get from where they are now to where they want to be and show them that, hey, this has been here all along. You just didn't know where to look for it. So I'm going to get off, do your thing. Okay? All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ray, for allowing me on this opportunity to share this uh, speaker's extravaganza. And listen, for all you business owners that are out there today, that no matter what level of business you have at this point, brick and mortar, whether you're a coach, uh, doesn't matter if you're a, a podcaster, uh, if you're in an MLM, it doesn't matter. Everyone has hidden marketing assets in their business that's always present. But let me ask you a question. If you had an opportunity to increase your sales, increase your business, increase your bottom line by 30% or more, what more can you do? What more can you do in your life? Could you go on that vacation that you've been missing? Could you possibly hire more people? Could you possibly retire sooner by adding that 30% or more to your business? And let me say this without advertising, without any additional advertising dollars towards it. So that's what I want to talk about today. So the first thing I need to address is to answer the question that everybody wants to know, and that is, what are hidden marketing assets? First, let me share with you what they are not. What a hidden marketing asset is not, is not something on your balance sheet. What's a balance sheet? Most people will know that. Most business owners know that, accountants. A balance sheet has assets, liabilities, and uh, equity, or, or stockholders' equity. We're not talking about the assets such as cash or inventory or manufacturing equipment that are tangible. We're talking about marketing assets that may not be, that may be in this, uh, the area of intangible. So let me give you an example so you can kind of get a flow of what we're talking about here. Let me give you three examples of what that is. Number one. Customers that no longer do business with you are an asset. That's right. Customers that are no longer doing business with you. So imagine, say if uh, you had a certain number of, of clients that you no longer do business with you and you were able to bring back 10%, what would that do for your business? That's called a hidden asset. 
by simply going to them and finding out why did they leave in the first place. You can bring some of them back. Underpromoted USP or value proposition. What's a USP? Unique selling proposition. It is your message to the market, the value to the market, your value proposition. You may hear it different ways, your branded message, or some people may call it a mission statement, which I don't think it's. I think it is. It's more of a unique selling proposition. And so under promoted means a U.S. example of a USP would be this. OK, generally, it's about nine. It's a statement of about 90 words, no more than that. And it explains to the market your value to them and is generally tangible with specifics. OK, let me give you an example. Lens crafter. If you wear glasses, what is their USP? If you need, when you want your glasses in an hour, that's their USP. Tangible. In an hour, you can have your glasses. From the time you see the dock to the time you have your glasses in hand is an hour. And so they have to set up their entire operation to be able to get your glasses an hour, meaning they have to have a laboratory there in the malls where they're located. But that's their unique selling proposition, different from everyone else, because you may get your glasses in two weeks or three weeks in other places, but in an hour with Lens Crafter or FedEx, which change a distribution and packaging system, distribution of packages, when you absolutely positively need it there overnight, that's specific USP and they're set to make that happen. So what's an under-promoted USP? Well, I had a client who was a CPA and he served the community by providing tax returns, tax planning, bookkeeping, those sorts of things that CPAs typically do. But he also did, he also provided service of fixed index annuities. But when I asked his employees and asked his clients, did they know that? They didn't know. Meaning he's leaving money on the table by under promoting the things that he actually does, which is fixed index annuities. So that's under promoted USP. Number three, relationship with suppliers and other businesses. Number one, let's just think of it this way. What's the relationship with your suppliers? I'm talking about relationships that don't cost you money, doesn't take a lot of resources, just a, a joint relationship that could be profitable for both sides. Give me an example. Let's say if you're a mover. Movers, those that move people out of their homes and into new homes, generally can align themselves with real estate agents. It's a natural progression. So say if that actual mover provides a, a handout or a readable or instructions or a newsletter that shows you how to properly pack your things when you're moving so you can have the least amount of damage to it. Provide that to real estate agents to build a relationship with that'll have all your information. They hand it out to their clients that are moving. Typically, they're buying homes or moving out of them. And you can gain clients that way without spending any more money other than printing the uh, materials. And then you reciprocate to that. You reciprocate to that real estate agent by sharing their information with those that, who are moving. So there you can see what we call alliance marketing or relationship marketing. Okay, so let's get into right now the five insider secrets that will uncover those hidden marketing assets that I just mentioned to you and how to actually leverage them to increase your bottom line by 30% or more without spending any more money on advertising. So let's go ahead and, and uh, we're going to get into it right away. And so I want to show you something. It's called the fifth wheel. I call it the fifth wheel, those five insider secrets. Fifth wheel, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is clarify your message. There are five C's. Communicate that message exponentially. In addition to that, you're gonna to want to capture testimonials, powerful testimonials. And then you want to convert. You wanna be able to convert those HMA assets by knowing what your numbers are. Database, mark, uh, database management. And then close. Close, close, close. Those are the five steps. I'm going to get into them as quickly as I can. And then at the end, I'm going to give you an opportunity to take something with you personally that'll, that'll allow you, give you a tool that allow you to start ironing those things out. And by the way, we're going to be able to do this 
in less than an hour. You can identify these assets in under an hour. So let's go with number one. So clarify your message. Your USP must answer a minimum of two questions and then a bonus question, okay? Let me get into it. The first question is you, your USP has to answer is, why do people buy from you? And this question cannot be asked from where you sit. It must be asked from where the customer or prospect or client sits. They have to answer that question and you have to answer it being in their shoes. Why do people buy from you? Why do they buy from you? Okay, and it's not a quick answer. It has to be researched and looked at, surveyed to come up with why do they buy from you and not someone else. Number two, if they aren't buying from you now, why should they? If they're not buying from you right now, why should they? If they're already currently with competition, why should they come over? If they're not buying or they're making a decision, they aren't buying from you right now, why should they? Those are the two questions that you have to answer in order to generate a solid message to market or unique selling proposition or value proposition. Now, the third question. The third question is, why do you, and you finish the sentence, why do you sell real estate? Why are you a real estate agent? Or why are you a photographer? Why do you sell photos? Or why do you sell photo services? Why are you a CPA? Why do you do taxes? And what they're looking for is not a superficial answer. The question is a hard question. It's a story. This is your opportunity to tell your story as to why you do what you do. You understand? Take a pyramid, for instance. And on the bottom of that pyramid, everybody has jobs. It's very crowded at the bottom. And then you step up near the middle and those are the ones that have careers and you have the very top. Those are the ones that have a calling for what they're doing, the calling. They don't feel like they have a career or a job. They have a business where, or a business, whatever it is. Mother Teresa had a calling and she wasn't in business for anything. A calling. They want to know what is that calling. That's really what it is they're asking. So it gives you an opportunity to share your story and to open up to people just a little bit, enough for them to trust you. You see, the first two questions may get them in the door, but the very last question, if done correctly, should keep them coming back. Does that make sense? So let's go ahead and hit number two. Now that you have your message, you gotta communicate that message exponentially. What do I mean by that? In everything you do, you must evangelize that message. So the most important, uh, the most important of these five steps is the first one, of course, because you have to have that message to market. But then you gotta communicate through everything you do. What do I mean? Your business cards, the way you answer the phone, the way your staff answers the phone, your answer, the answering machine. If you wrap your vehicle in any way, it has to have a message in it. If you're on radio or your website or on television or even mobile, sending out an SMS message, a text message, it has to have that messaging in it. You must communicate exponentially and that's what we're talking about. Let me give you an example of what that would look like, okay? My business card. Notice that it's rectangular in nature. In the front of the card, is this wonderful uh, lady that gave me a testimony. Her name is uh, Michelle Brubaker. And she says at the top, a game changer. It's my testimony, this is my business card. And on the very front, it gives exactly what it is that I do. My unique selling proposition is five steps that will enable you to find in marketing assets that can virtually increase profits by at least 30% and reduce your advertising costs by leveraging the internet and the power of your voice, okay? Tangible. Not superficial, not that I work hard, not that I've been doing this for a long time. It's the fact of the result that you get from working. That's the USB, and that has to be resounded. By the way, this can't be placed around a rubber band and put uh, and placed around other business cards when I go to a uh, an actual um, networking event. This gets numerous touches, okay? Numerous touches. So let's go to uh, number three, capture powerful testimonials. I kind of touched down on that a little bit. And capturing power for testimonials are very easy to do. You have to make the time for it because why is it important? 
Imagine having a 24 seven salesperson constantly. You have these testimonials on your website, people hearing them. Remember, people live vicariously through the lives of other people. They want social proof. Who is it that provides this service and how great it is? Isn't it wonderful to have someone else vouch for you versus you having to sell yourself? That's what capturing the powerful testimonials can do. And I can get into that a little bit later. Won't be able to do it today, but I would love to share the techniques of doing it. Let me just give you one real quick. Take a simple survey, five question survey that improves your business to your top clean, uh, top 10 clients. And then in one of those questions, ask an open-ended question. If someone is thinking about coming and doing business with me, what would you say to them? And then make sure your recorder is on because it's powerful. Now you got them in the moment. They're going to share information about you without you having to say something for yourself. So you may want to take that down. All right. The next one is convert. You must convert. You must convert, convert, convert. Okay. Let me hold that up real quick. Convert a stranger to a friend. Leveraging those hidden marketing assets. You must convert. What do I mean by convert? In order for you to convert, you have to keep some form of database, database of all of your clients and even past clients and prospective clients. And then segment those. I mean, divide them up into segments so you'll know who they actually are. But converting, more importantly, you got to know your numbers. What do I mean by knowing your numbers? What is your conversion rate? What it is you're converting? Let's give you an example. All right. You do a survey to go back to the old clients that have left. Say if it's 200 of them, and I hand an actual example of this. 200 of them, you do the survey or have someone do it for you, and 20 of them, I'm sorry, 15 of them came back. Let's make it 20. 20 of them came back, 10%. 10%. And the value per client, the amount of money you make per client is $4,800. You do the math. That's a massive increase to your business. That's why I can virtually guarantee 30% or more in your business. So converting from a stranger to a friend and knowing your numbers and how quickly that can be done to add to your bottom line. And then last but not least, you want to close. You want to close, close, close. There are three rules to close it, okay? What is rule number one? Always be closing. That may mean you need uh, you may need to take some sales training. Not be afraid to ask for the money. To make sure that when you're closing, even if it's an appointment by the phone to set an appointment, you close the date of that appointment so you can count on that and see what your conversion rate on setting appointments. Oh, the number of appointments that I set, this is the number of sales that I have. Converting. How many are coming through the door? How many are coming through the restaurant? How many are coming through the door to be serviced? to get their nails done. Closing, closing, always be closing. Rule number two is to remember the rule number one. And then of course, most important rule is rule number three. Make sure you're executing perfectly rule number one and two. So you gotta always, always, always be closing. Now, those are the five insider secrets that I've just shared, five of them, okay? that you can take right now and actually apply them to your business. And what I wanna offer you now is an opportunity for a small gift, okay? During my webinars and, and seminars that I actually do, I actually have booklets where people actually learn. We go through it and we actually have a product and a deliverable at the end. I wanna offer you book number one, which is developing your USP. For are watching this today, and taking the time to be here, your USP. And it's a it's a great booklet, um, and I'll send it in PDF format to you. And it will help you refine and develop your USP. So how do you do it? How do you get there? Just simply go to www.investinuseminars.com. That's invest, I-N-V-E-S-T, N I N U Y O U seminars, S E M I N A R S dot com. Put in your name and your email address, no strings attached, just a gift from me to you for saying thank you for being here today. And if you ever have any questions, my name and email address 
is uh, 800-774-4946, 800-774-4946, or you can contact me at joe at investinyouseminars.com. And I would love to talk to you. And we can even go over for about 15 minutes. I'll even go through some stuff with you in that book that I've sent you. So without further ado, that's it. Guys, remember this. You personally are your greatest asset. And always remember those five insider secrets that you are important to you and to make sure you give value to your client. And I'll see you at the top. You brought up so many good things, but I got to ask you this. Why do you feel people miss those assets? What's the number one reason? Is it, is it that they don't know or if they think they're no good or what do you feel the number one reason is? I think it's recognition. And most people, number one is recognizing it. And sometimes they cannot see the forest for the trees, Raven, because here's why. Most a lot of entrepreneurs, especially small businesses, because they don't have a lot of staff around them, they're always mm -hmm. working in their business versus on their business. Yeah. So if, if that's happening, it's hard for you to see the dime that's on the ground that you need to pick up. That's an opportunity. That's, that's more money for you because we're, they're, they're, they're looking, they're too myopic. So they can't see it. They don't see the value in it. And because it's not a tangible, they can't pick it up and carry it with them or touch it or kiss it or what have you. They don't feel <laughs> it's there. So a lot of it is bringing the realization that business owners, that if you've been around for any period of time, you have assets, hidden assets, marketing assets that's in your business that can actually bring you revenue without adding a dime in advertising. That's the amazing part. And to recap, what he spoke about was clarify, communicate, capture, convert, and close. You can find out more from none other than Joe Burroughs at investinuseminars.com. That's investinuseminars.com. And go get your free gift. I recommend you go get it now. Thanks so much, Joe. I'm going to try to see if we can bring Reggie on. Good okay. job, my man. All right. All right. All right. All right. That's and that's Joe. Thank you, Joe. You're listening to the Amazing Women and Men of Power Radio Network. This is the Amazing Women and Men of Power Speaking Extravaganza Day One. Hello, Patricia. Hi, everyone. Good. Let me tell everybody a little bit about you. Okay. So this is Patricia, and she, her, Patricia Varlak, and she's an author, life coach, and speaker. Her company's called Instruction Center for the Wise. And she helps two sets of people use their minds more consciously and effectively. People who want to achieve a big goal and just do not know how. And people who feel stuck and who want a different result in life. So take it away, Patricia. Thank you very much, Rachel. It is uh, I'm very grateful for the opportunity. <laughs> and as Raven mentioned, I'm an author, I'm a speaker, and a coach at my business called Instructions for the Right. And I started with this business because of the things I went through and wanting to help people, how I have been helped. And basically what do I do? I help people to become aware of how their minds work and also how to effectively use their minds. And for two things, for two, basically two people who said, first, people who want to a big goal, and then people who are stuck in a negative cycle, uh, negative results. Uh, and why both people? Because when you have a big goal, when you set a big goal, I can guarantee you we're gonna get stuck. So both people get stuck, are stuck, and I help you with that because I myself was stuck twice. I fell into depression once I was teenager. And then afterwards, in my late 20s, early 30s, I was depressed for a few years. And then I got burned out from one day to the next. I couldn't get to work. I lost the use of my hand, my hands. Yes, I couldn't hold a piece of paper like this. I lost the use of my legs. I just couldn't walk. I over all of these things, plus more things. And going through all of this, I learned to use my mind. 
And that has helped me to get in different areas and even to prevent myself from getting sick, really sick by getting a stroke, getting a heart. You see, our mind is very, very powerful. And I want to talk about three things tonight. Number one, I want to talk about we all have the same mind. We all have the same mind. For some reason or other, we think, hey, my mind is different than your mind. Uh, because you are such a bad person, you know, not like you. But basically, we all have the same mind. And when you show you how mind works, because it's not mine, you will understand another person. And then you can have compassion for another person. Because many times we don't have compassion. Because then to, uh, the, uh, how do you say, distance ourselves from one another. When we are basically the same. And you know our mind has different mind. We have a conscious mind, we have a subconscious mind. And our subconscious mind has a lot of information. All of information. And from since we were in our mother's womb. And once we deal with one issue, another issue pops up. And then another issue pops up. So when you see someone with one issue, and you're thinking, oh, that's a bad person, that's this, that's that, guess what? That issue probably is in you too, but it just did not get out of the filing cabinet yet. See? So that is why it's important not to judge other people. Because... What we see in another is also in us. We mirror each other. Yeah, we have the same mind. And we process information the same way. The same way. Some people think, oh, I'm different than someone, you know. I have a problem that's really bad. And I cannot handle this problem. Or it cannot be solved. And that is not true. If someone has solved the problem, we can solve it too. Because we have the same you see, I felt depression. Other people felt for me depression too. Because it do the same process. Yeah? And with minds, in our minds, we have thoughts and we have emotions. And we can use our thoughts, we can change our thoughts, our emotions, our feelings. Our mind just tool. But we all have the same tool. Yeah? We have it. It's something that we have. It's not something that we are. We're not our thoughts. We are not our emotions. But we have the same tool that we can use. Now, the second thing to talk about is that we all have the same issue. We all have the issue. The tool in itself is good, but it's how you deal with the issue. I hope with the tool. How you handle the tool. And most of us, we don't handle the tool correctly. As a matter of fact, we're not even handling it in a certain way. Because we are just going through the motion, going through the motion, going through the motion. And what I help people to become aware how the mind works and how to use it as a tool to gather results from you. So the key is to become aware. We all have the same issues. And this, the way you use the tool basically is the same way, the same way. Yeah? So we have thoughts. We have emotions. We have emotions and thoughts that lead to good results. We have emotions and thoughts that can lead to destructive, negative results. And the key is to make that switch. But it's very difficult to make a switch if you don't know how. It's very difficult to make a switch if you don't understand what's really going on. All of us have negative thoughts and have negative emotions. So we all have the same issues. In a way, issues. Maybe we express it in a different way. And as I mentioned before, one issue we may have that someone else doesn't show right now, but doesn't show right now. 
because it will come up later. So, key is, again, we all have the same issues. And when we look at this, we can again have compassion for one another. In this world, nowadays, there is so much hatred, so much anger, disappointment, frustration, and, and things that just can be very, very depressed. So, right now, everyone is so fearful of war. But guess what? It's not just one line. Everyone together, we have a collective mind. So even so, we need to look at our mind and say, hey, I can influence by starting with me. And by looking, hey, things that are coming out outside there are also happening in me. Because we have one, we have the issues. Now, the good thing is that since we have, number one, the same mind, the same issues, and if someone just rock back and overcomes, means anybody can overcome. If someone has achieved a big goal, that means anybody can achieve a big goal. It doesn't mean I have to achieve the same goal as you, but you overcame, I can overcome. That is the thing. We all have this hope that things can change. So none of us say there is no hope for me. None of us say this relationship cannot change. None of us say I cannot be healed. None of us say I cannot come out of poverty. If we are saying this and believing this, it's because we are being alive. We are believing that our thoughts, it's us. When in reality, our thoughts is just something that can come and go. Actually, we are perfect. But we need to use our tool. And do not make a mistake to identify that tool with us. If I am sad, it doesn't mean I am sad at this moment. Feel sad, I have sad thoughts, but I am a happy person. But those thoughts, they close the time that I cannot really see who I am. And you see, that, that was my story. I was very, very sad. And I did not understand why. No one around me understood why. But by going, by digging deep into my mind, I came to see why. And you know, all the time is such a great, great tool. It's just great. You know, one of my big goals that I wrote some years ago was to learn, use my mind, learn to understand my mind. And that's why I learned a lot too. Uh, and my mind is, or our mind is so amazing, right? That I was able to tap into my mother's mind. And I found out that I felt rejected in my mother's mind. And that is why I got uh, depressed in time because it's like, and I, I used to put a lot of pressure on my mom telling my mother, I don't know why, and you don't love me, I don't know why, and you don't love me. And I was able to use my mind tap into my mother's mind because being in your mother's mind, you and your mother are one. And I was able to see that my mother didn't have no issue with me. But she was three years old when she uh, had me. And I came as it was the last 12th child. Yeah. And I came after the 11, the, the difference between me and the 11, seven years. My mother until the ninth month where she got scared that she was going to die. And I interpreted that as my mother did not want it. That is why when I was putting pressure on my mother, I feel you don't love me. I feel you don't love me. She's like, what are you talking about? You know? And this is it with our mind. We pick up information and we interpret it. And we usually, most of the time, interpret the wrong way. 
we interpret it most of the time in a negative way. And then we get negative results. Like in my situation, I fell into depression and a lot of other negative things. So right now, I'm happy. I'm happy. The day I wake up, I'm happy. I am completely different from when, uh, how it was before. When I be in depression, you could sleep. I had years I wasn't sleeping. And now I fall asleep right away. And I, I sleep deeply, no problem. You see? So if I can have a break, anyone can have their break and come depression. Now with depression, I have to say, uh, we call, say you are depressed when you are feeling depressed for more than two weeks. And depression also, we have to look at it. It, it can be that someone has a chemical imbalance. So not necessarily that it has to do with uh, when you're talks, okay? And I'm very grateful that I was able to come out of depression, stay out of depression without medication. But I'm okay. You must be wanted. And many people have a problem with their desire. The desire is not strong enough. You have to desire, you have to have a drive go for what you want, yeah? And I want to come out of that depression. I want a different life. And I continued and continued until when I got out. And now I hit the tipping point where my life is completely different, yeah? Completely different. If I can do it, you can do it too. Because well, we have this mind, we have this issue. And we can have the same great result. We can have in whatever area it is. I give an example of me with my mind towards just motion and stuff, but it can also be physical stuff. I've, I've overcome physical things just with my mind. And of course, I don't say you don't use medication. I choose not to use medication and I wasn't even thinking on medication, you know. Uh, physically, I had issues. I just use my mind, find out what was the roots. Everything goes back to the roots. Where did it come from? Because this is not me. Yeah, negative not thoughts, negative emotions, they come and go. They are not us. We are perfect. So, whatever these thoughts and even positive thoughts, they are not us. We are just perfect. That's it. Yeah. So, whatever our thoughts, we just analyze them as information. And we know that maybe this comes from, this is not me. And once you see where it comes from, you can get rid of it. And it is continuous process because as I mentioned before we have our subconscious mind that is filled filled with information and filled with a lot of negative information and it's as if we have been hypnotized and we just keep living this lie living this lie living this lie until we become aware hey this is how it works I did it the wrong way. I used the tool of my mind the wrong way. And now I want to use it the right way. It is a choice. You become aware, and then it is a choice. If you are going to use your tool, your mind, a different So my question to you today is, do you want a different result? Do you want to achieve a big goal? And then some people tell me, but Patricia, I don't know what I want. Yes, it's a big issue. I go around and I ask people, what is it you want? Most people don't know. Because people, most people are living someone else. And this is why this question is so important. What is it you want? Just stand and ask yourself the question, what is it that I really, really want? What is it that I want in a relationship? What is it that I want? for my body, 
what is it I want uh, for my finances? How much money do I have? How do I live? You know, once we answer this question, we are really, truly starting to lose our mind. Only then we are consciously, let me put it this way, consciously starting to lose our mind for the results that we want. It's your life. So what do you want? Yeah. We all were created for a purpose. And it's important to find out what is that purpose. Yeah. And the answer, it's in your mind. Just ask. Because another part of it, I just mentioned briefly, conscious mind, subconscious mind that stores information, our conscious mind receives information, and we accept it goes in the subconscious mind. But we also have a superconscious mind. That is the mind of God in us. That is the mind of the universe. And information that we want, we always ask ourselves a question and the answer is. When we ask the question, it's like saying a prayer. And the God within it, the superconscious mind, will answer. I'm telling you, a lot of people don't even know. You see, with my superconscious mind, I also got a lot of answers to questions that I didn't know about what, you know? So, key, key, key. I want to surprise again. We all have a tool, a great, amazing, amazing tool called the mind. And we all have this mind. So we don't. And we all have, number two, the same issue. We don't judge each other. We focus on working on ourselves. All of the time, focus on working on us. When we do something to someone else, we see a reaction. See, we attract certain people, certain things. That is information to tell us what is in our mind. Isn't that something? It's just information. And that information we process it, we process. So all have this in mind. Don't focus on the other people. Don't be judging. Don't be condemning. Look at you. hey, this information. You have this in mind. Oh, this is me too. And then hey, we have the same issue. We have this mind works the same way. You have the results and getting the results. We have the same issue. We're not in correct and number three if someone come i can come too we all can overcome we all can get the breakthrough it doesn't matter in what area of our lives we all can achieve a big goal the question is do you want it many times it's people who get robbed by them but really want to come up high yeah like when you have someone and you they're in the sea and you press them down in, and they're gasping and they want to come up they want to breathe. Many times people who have that modern that is what happens to them and they become very successful and they get their breakthrough. But there are some of us who we have some negative results, but to us it's okay, you know, I mean it's okay. And by having that mindset, by thinking I don't have my name has issues. Other people, my colleagues have issues, not me. You are robbing yourself, living a life of joy, living a life of peace, living an amazing life because you're settling for mediocrity. So I want to encourage everyone today to go for more because we were created for more. Can you imagine we use very little capacity of our mind? Very little capacity. Because we prefer to live in mediocre life. And usually, usually all the time, it has to do with fear. It has to do also with us trying to give this uh, image of others. Yeah? No, oh, be you. You are happy already when you. You know, you feel more amazing when you are. Because you are amazing. But to be amazing, feel amazing, you have to be you. You don't have to be friend. Just be you. Like I share with people, just what I'm doing, what I'm doing, 
I'm like, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm busy working on myself. It's okay. It's all okay. Because it's just information. And I'm going to process that information the way it's supposed to be so that I can get the results. So the challenge for you to say, I'm okay. I'm okay with my comfort zone. You know, the purpose of life is good. If life has to be okay, we're not okay. If we can learn that these are two correctly, then yes, we're growing. We're learning to use the power that we have, and we are very powerful. With the superconscious mind, we're omnipotent. And believe you me, most of us, we are not using that. We are not using it. We are using very little. So to start using our power, using our mind, we need to start working on overcoming those issues, those roots and the tree of our life that we do not like, those negative things that are keeping us back, whether it's your health, with your health, with your weight, with your finances, with your relationships, with your children, partner, or if that you're not getting a partner, you're not finding a partner, you keep attracting the wrong people with our relationships at work, with our issues of not getting a job, issues with our businesses. It can be in so many different areas. It doesn't matter. You know, going for what you love, feeling stuck. We can all overcome. We can all overcome. But we need to be honest with ourselves. And I want to ask you, where are you? Have you hit rock button? And I can tell you, you can make it to the top. You can have a complete different change in your life because it has happened to me. And since we have the same mind, it can happen to you. If you are a person and you say, oh, I'm okay, I want to challenge you. Because there's something there that is hindering you. Just like I spoke about the, on my radio show, um, I have a radio show every Wednesday. It's called Mindset Shift Break Radio. And I spoke about the reason why people really don't go for the big goals or for great is because we have this um, lack of desire. And I spoke about one reason, I was talking about more reasons and another or the other entities. But one is that we believe deep down we do deserve the beast. We don't deserve the best. And again, this is a lie that we believe. This is a thought that is negative. It's a limiting belief that's keeping us back. And we need to get rid of it. We need to keep saying to ourselves, I deserve the best. I deserve the best. Yeah? I deserve to put my mind there, whatever I want. I deserve to have an amazing life. I deserve to be happy. I deserve to achieve great things and to have a great Yes, you deserve. But for some reason, you picked up this thing that says, no, you don't deserve it. And you need to let go of that. You need to let go of what is blocking you for your breakthrough and what is blocking you in achieving big goals. And here is where I come in. As a coach and a trainer, I help you see the root, what's caused it, so that you can make that switch. And if you're interested in the individual, you can contact me by going on my book page, Patricia Varlak, with the CK at the end, V A R L E C K. And you can contact me, make an appointment, a first appointment for free for 20 minutes, and we see how I can help you if you feel okay with me, I'm okay with you. And from there, set up some appointments. All right, everyone. There she is, Patricia Varlek. Yay, Patricia. We're going to try. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you. You're tuned in to the Amazing Women and Men of Power Radio Network. And this is uh, our speaker's extravaganza. We're, our plans are to do two more of these. And uh, we're just trying a new platform as well. So we thank you for your patience. Really appreciate that. So you're looking at Reggie Lucina. Now, Reggie is another host of ours, an amazing a women and men of power host. He's on Fridays. He is a student of John D. Martini. He's also one of his uh, coaches and speakers. And 
He just released a brand new program. I'm going to let him tell you about that. So, Reggie, take it away. All right. Thank All you, Raven. Um, I'm Reggie Lucina. Um, I'm one of just a few hundred division of the state architect class one division building inspectors. And what does that mean? That means I save and protect the lives of men, women, and children in the buildings we use every day. Um, in industry, all across the board, across the planet, everybody comes from a, a cut the corners to survive mindset. And um, nobody wins in the end on this stuff. That's why we have so much chaos and disorder, not just in the known um, building real estate development industry uh because there's no there's no um governance on anything so everybody's just doing what they want and running all over the place and that's why they have guys like me out there who are very um extremely trained in all phases and aspects of, of the industry i'm just a rare breed um in the results of uh this what i do is i help contractors and builders and construction companies and developers um, create breakthroughs that uh, com to help them complete projects on time to make more money and avoid lawsuits and basically have more time and money to, to live and do what they love to do in their family life. And yesterday, or actually earlier today, I was writing a, a little phrase that said, um, you know, uh, language negative pattern is the uh the implants of destructive uh imperative feedback in your lives and, and society is conditioned through the workforce in all um in all areas of industry it conditions the people to focus on the negative and so the feedback comes back in an un under they're not understanding the language so it impairs their behavior and I deal with this out on the in the industry in the in the real world on a daily basis of what I do. So I'm just going to real quickly let you know that um, uh, right now this book, which is I wrote, it's taken five years to write it. Um, it's now just as this week been accepted into the um, uh, United States uh, federal copyright department and you can see my name just go to regilacina.com and you can find access to it um in addition to that you know i have a, a like a press kit to send to companies and corporations to help them out um, in addition to that you know i have a a little mini guide for presentations uh like being a, a guest host speaker and explaining what the system is about and if you want you can also go to the website uh, regulacena.com and get a free um pdf download of how to build business relationships for life which is a classic example of how you behave in your own life because your life is your business and and in business is an industry problem where we uh focus on cutting corners and it comes from the top down it doesn't come from the bottom up so the behaviors are what's causing um uh, this type of a uh, outcome and i'll give you an example you know this past week uh, the orville dam in northern california which is one of the largest uh, reservoirs in, in our state um it's threatening the lives of thousands of people right now because it's getting ready to break. And because we're functioning in this lower bitter mindset, we're in default and we're not by design in what we're doing. And we believe by cutting corners, this is the avenue to uh, our success. And, and really what that you're doing is you're drawing in just the opposite effect into your life, into your business, into your personal individual um uh, resonance in in what it is that you believe in doing and, and no one loves what they're doing anymore everybody's just doing by numbers and and that's what my program as you can see behind me it's called beat the building inspector and i just showed you that that's what beat the building inspector is all about it's about getting out of the way of 
this and getting into this right here. Um, it's a nightmare and it's been taught for ages. It's been covered up uh, for a very long time. And I believe I'm the first person ever to really face it that I know of. I mean, and I've been working on this project for years. And uh, like I said, it's just finally come to uh, fruition. Um, what I do is I teach to strive, go from a low bidder fixed mindset and strive to be uh, a world-class business and create your business to, begin to, um, to get to remold and remelinate the way we think. It's, it's a mind shift. And the only way to get different results and get a different outcome is to change the way we think. And, and that's for all coaches, all trainers that are helping other people out there on this planet. And my approach is using my background and my credentials because I'm one of just a few hundred to ever have this title as a class one um, building inspector for the state of California. And uh, I have other international licenses just coupled together. Uh, I've got some really unique credentials. And I deal with this human behavior and the outcome of the results of the way people behave all day long. And they'll do things three times to prove themselves right, but they'll spend any amount of money to do that. And the thing is, they're in their way when they do this. If they just realize that the assets in hiring an expert are so much cheaper than trying to figure it out on yourself, you're cutting... Um, you know, a 20 to 40 year learning curve out on people's lives and what they're paying for. And and, and in return, the reward is, uh, um, you know, you get to experience a more fulfilled life instead of a more life of struggle. And, and that's what I do. I help people remove the struggle out of everything that they're doing uh, and, 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 and basically go for a more thriving lifestyle. You know, that's what we're all here for. We only get one chance on this ride around. And I've learned to, um, hang on, let me just turn that off. Um, I've learned to package this up, and that's why it took five years to write this. And I had to hire someone to listen to me talk for the past three years. And they finally one day says, now I get what you're talking about. It's so simple. Even a child can understand this process. You know, of, of, you know, you got to learn to delegate. And what that means is to develop and design and deliver what it is you're all about. And, and that's what I get into the, the businesses and stuff. Um, yes, in industry, the, the label building inspector or consultant, we're considered your worst enemy, but the truth is, is we're a, a library of the Congress of a wealth of knowledge that can support you to becoming a winner in the low bidder environment. And that's what I specialize in, is taking you from that mindset and developing a new mindset, develop, designing it what you need, and then we deliver the results. And um, it, it, it's basically raising the standards um and quality of your life and all the people that surround you in your business and uh your at they're, they're your assets is what it really is You're coming together you know it's overcoming problems and if you're not being challenged with problems and you're not growing you're just letting yourself allow it to be held back and um and and no one really wants to wake up in the morning and say I don't want to be valuable. I re I help you rearrange your values um, from the corporate executive level all the way down to the worker level. And once we cross link everything together, uh, you have a um, a connected organization where everybody's understanding their positions and what they're really there for. And again, remember everything starts at the top down in business because the top people at the top are the ones making the decision for everybody else and what they're gonna do and not do. And if they're not incongruent with the mission or the vision 
or the purpose of everything. They're just living, which living what they believe is to be um, acceptable by normal standards, which have been passed on for the past hundreds of years, which I hear on a regular basis. Oh God, we've been doing this for 50 years this way. Why do we have to change? Well, change is inevitable. If you can't accept change, you're always going to be suppressed down by the forces of life. And, and those are the unwritten laws that people don't understand. They don't know about them. And those that are above them in the more powers, they, they suppress them on them as a form of, uh, let's say, fears or shames or make them feel guilty about what they're doing so they can maintain control. And... My process is, is all about um, uh, delivering an outcome where everybody wins. And even if you're competing in a world where the lowest price wins, which means we're all competing for the lowest step on the ladder, which is uh, crazy because there's enough to go around for everybody. And um, uh, that's why I call it the low bidder nightmare in real life you take this home with you um, and it, it rubs off everywhere in your life and that's why so many people are in, in in pain and suffering regardless of what area or domain of your life we're talking about it doesn't matter if it's business or if it's social or if it's a family or financial or spiritual areas of your life uh, I mean the list goes on depending on what methodology you're um, working with people. Um, the, the object is to get people to recognize the, um, you know, to recognize getting out of this and so their hearts can open up and actually really see the truth. And when you can see the truth, you can see equally both sides of the equation, both the positive and the negative. And then you can make your decisions based on what is more congruent with you and um that's why i call it beat the building inspector you know um you follow my program we develop the system that works for you in my uh hang on a second in this training success training manual um I have over a thousand different bullet points broken down into three categories, which uh, structure a customized plan catered to your needs, regardless of the corporation or the business industry. And it applies to everything. Uh, you know, like I said in a little while ago, today I was writing down, you know, our thoughts are, are basically negative patterns that are implanted as a destructive language causing imperative feedbacks in our lives of lack of understanding and nobody teaches this stuff anywhere out there um it's a shame and i'm glad to be a uh, part of this amazing women and men of power speaker organization i have been for going on four years now which is amazing and four years ago uh you know I met Raven and I had nothing. I was still struggling, looking for my message, looking for my word. And between her and a few other coaches and Dr. John D. Martini, which I'm one of his 3,000 worldwide global facilitators to help people overcome their uh, challenges and break through the struggles that are holding them back so they can relieve the emotions that are charged with negative energy, which allows people just to bloom again overnight. And I actually went through that myself. You know, tired of hitting the ceiling, tired of hitting the ceiling, and you're doing everything you can, and all of a sudden, someone comes into your life who gives you the answers that you're looking for. So I ask you, if I'm the right person, then just go to beatthebuildinginspector.com at the bottom of the page, there's a couple different portals. And get in contact with me. Download my free book on building business relationships for life because it does apply 
to all areas and all domains of your life as well. Because first and foremost, our business is our life. And if we can't run our business of our own life, then we can't run ourselves. And we ended up being subordinate to everybody else on the planet. Uh, you know, religious and politics and things like that, we become uh, victims of it. And then we self-victimize ourselves of that and our behavior molds and, and rewires our reactions and our responses which causes the pain and sufferings we put ourselves through. And it's not right. We don't have to be that way anymore. There's plenty to go around for everybody. And my biggest thing is to look yourself in the mirror every morning when you wake up and just say, thank you, I love you. I'm grateful for being here and what I have. Today I was out walking around in uh, downtown Santa Monica and I went for a, a lesson on the computer at Apple store and I was just so grateful to be in that moment that I'm alive and I have the ability to continue to learn and grow. And, you know, yes, money and things like that are important. They're, um, they're resources for us to grow, but no matter where you're at, what level of social life you live in, um, there's appreciation and gratitude for self and others everywhere and being thankful for everything and um you know this is what removes all the loss of time in your life um it, it basically all this lawsuits which can be um portrayed in many different activities just like getting a speeding ticket that's a form of a lawsuit against you you know and there's so many uh characterizations that um are mirrored the same way, you know? And, and so my uh, thing is to challenge yourself and face the problem instead of being in a survival mode, learn to become in a, th uh, a thrival mode, you know? Set goals, do your best. And I have, you know, this whole course that's, like I said, being uh, copywritten by this federal state um, copyright department. And I believe it's gonna sweep the world. I think it's gonna sweep the planet. I'm not gonna be able to teach everybody and train everybody, but you know, the message will get out there. And to all my friends here and amazing men and women of power, uh, you know, I love you all. Um, what you can expect is uh, finding that building inspector inside yourself, because that's what you're fighting against. And that's why I called it beat the building inspector, because it's about you. It's about overcoming you and becoming a more fulfilled you and, and living your life to the fullest you can with what you've got to work with. And a lot of people out there know that my challenges started when I was five years old when, um, you know, look, my father committed suicide in front of me and it wasn't a pretty, a, a pretty ride. By the time I was 13, I'd already been out on my own running from the law. Um, by the time I was 15, I was completely gone from home. And now I'm one of the top number one or the top one to 2% building inspection consultants for the state of California with some international licenses that, um, uh, you know, I've done something with my life and I've learned a lot. I've been through the bankruptcies, the divorce, the, the near life, loss of life experiences, the foreclosures multiple times over and over. Every time there's been a recession that hit the United States, I've been completely wiped out. And I just spent the last seven years uh, getting through this last recession that crippled me. I lost well over a million dollars in assets and uh, it bankrupted me. I was foreclosed and the medical doctor said I had two years to die, to live. I mean, and uh, I'm here. I'm going on 10 years later. I'm here and I'm healthier than I ever have been. In my life and through my program beat the building inspector i share the same philosophies with you um my call to action is you know what uh, again go to my website beat the building inspector email me um if you're a qualifying business or a, a person um we'll set up a free consultation you know 20 minutes to an hour and see if we're the right fit for each other 
Um, you can invite me to speak and train at your um, for your audiences as well. Or personally, let me create breakthroughs in your life and your businesses. Um, that's my goal. I'm still uh, a representative for the state of California. There's more than 40 million people here. If you add in the people that aren't registered, and uh, I, I just look after their lives. Everything I do is about saving their lives long after I'm gone because the buildings I look into are the safe buildings for natural disasters, schools, colleges, state buildings where people can go and harbor and get a reprieve. Uh, when their homes get uh, knocked down by earthquakes or, or storms or hurricanes, I'm the guy that goes out there and looks after you, the people who use the buildings and things that are of need in your own life. Um, they're essential to your life, it affects your life, and I present breakthroughs and, um, uh, you know, just ways to see things differently and think differently and release you from, you know, the emotional stresses or the traumas, which are very impairing to everybody. We're all human, regardless of what race, creed, or sex we are. We all experience the same traits of um, negative, uh, you know what I say earlier, negative imperative language feedback. And it's so detrimental for you to get out of that because you, it causes all the resentments in your life. And I don't want you to go to the grave in resentment. I want you to go to the grave being grateful for everything that you have. That's probably the most important gift I can pass on to everybody. Remember, you can go to the website and get a free downloadable PDF copy of how to uh, have better business relationships for life. Um, uh, my program's getting ready to launch here in a couple of months, uh, which is going to start going out to corporations across the nation. Um, I'm targeting the international corporations. Well, I know one of his biggest mentors is um, Dr. John D. Martini from The Secret, if you guys are familiar with him and wondering, well, wow, he was awesome, right? Well, that's why he's been trained by the best of the best. And we're, we're absolutely thrilled to have him and Joe and Patricia on our network. Thank you, Reggie. You guys, you're tuned in to the Amazing Women of Power and Men of Power Positive Programming Network. This is kind of stuff you get all the time on our network. We're all about positive programming, making a difference, and paying it forward. So let's see if we can bring Miss Ida on. She's our last speaker for the day. And uh, we appreciate you tuning in from YouTube, Twitter, Periscope, listening in to Amazing Women of Power. And, oh, I love that Sister Circle Empowerment. Wow, look at that sign. That's amazing. How are you? I'm wonderful. How about yourself, Brayden? Doing good. Awesome, awesome. Okay, well, I'm going to share with them a little bit about you, and then we'll let you go ahead and get started. All righty, so let me tell everybody a little bit about you, I. She's one of our amazing Women of Power hosts, and her show comes on tomorrow. She can tell you more about it, but she's a certified transitional life coach and the CEO of ASCEN, which stands for a Sister Circle Empowerment Network. Just look, look up at the ceiling of her and you'll see amazing. The organization supports female entrepreneurs to be successful in their business through the power of community and education. So we're going to turn it over to you. It's about five now. You have right into about 525, and then I'll come back and, and close it out. Hey, breaking news today, guys. Yes, and for, we want you to join us for our three-day speaker extravaganza. We'll let you know if it's going to be tomorrow. It may be pushed until next week. We'll just have to see how Miss Raven, that would be me, is feeling, okay? Um, but our speakers today have been uh, first Joe Burroughs and then Reggie Lucina and then Patricia Varlick and now Miss Ida. So take it away, Ida. Hello, everyone. I just want to do a great big thank you to you, Raven, for this opportunity to be able to, for all of us to be able to share our story. Uh, yes, I am the CEO of Assistive Circle Empowerment Network, 
FN LLC and all about helping women to grow their businesses as well as their personal life. And one of the things that I'm going to talk about today is stepping out of your comfort zone and taking a risk. And that's one of the big things that you will have to do as a business owner. You will take risks. There's no getting around it. Uh, it's one of the muscles, I always call it my muscle, that you're going to need to build up. You know, stepping out of your comfort zone and taking this is pretty scary. It definitely requires you being conscious and intentional about what it is that you want for yourself and your business. Uh, as a business owner, you're going, you, you will not be able to play it safe. Like it. It's just not going to happen. So I'm here to give you a few steps to help you get through it that you can stem on and, you know, start to incorporate in your day-to-day -day walk. Okay, one of the things that you want to be aware of is what's out of sight of your comfort zone? What's outside of it? What are you looking at that you wish you could do? And then start talking to yourself about what is keeping you from doing it, you know, and it could be anything. I mean, it could be just, for example, there are people that in this world that are afraid to go outside. All of us go outside every day. We give it no thought whatsoever. We just go outside and do what we do. But there are people on this earth that are afraid to go outside for whatever reason in their mind. Is it real to them? Absolutely. It is very real to them. So, you know, you want to think about what it is that you are afraid of in terms of getting out of that comfort zone. And then you need to get clear about what you, what you're trying to do in terms of overcoming it. Once you realize what it is that has you afraid of it, then start thinking about getting clear about some of the things that you can do to eliminate it. And you're going to take baby steps, because I'm here to tell you, the way you are today, you didn't get, the, get this way yesterday. It took time. It took years to develop whatever it is going on to happen to you, and it's going to take time to undo all of that. Simple as that. So the other thing, so you want to take baby steps because that is what's going to, you know, help you to get out of your comfort zone. So one of the things that, you know, I've talked to some women and networking events. Let's, let's kind of talk about that a little bit. Um, some people are afraid to talk to other people, you know, and that's a real big thing for them to be able to get out and talk to people and not, and not, um, clam up. So what you might do in a situation like that, just for example, is that you might do a small group. You might go talk, maybe talk to a couple of your neighbors. Let's go there. Those are some of the people a lot of times we don't know our neighbors because we live in that kind of world today where we don't even know our neighbors. So maybe do that. Or maybe when you next time you go to Walmart, find somebody in Walmart that you don't know and just say hi. Just say hi, that's it. And then maybe the next time, you might add a few more words. You might say, hi, that's a beautiful scarf you have on, or those are some beautiful earrings. That'll help you to overcome your fear of talking to people that you don't know. One of the things that I did, because I was, I was also in that boat at one time, I became a telemarketer calling people up on the phone because I figured I don't know these people. This is going to be a huge way for me to get out of this habit of being afraid of talking to people that I don't know. And I got cussed out. I got the phone slammed on me. I've got so many different things happen. And then there was some nice people as well that understood, you know, I'm doing my job. But the whole bottom line of that for me was to get out of my comfort zone in terms of talking to people that I did not know. And, quite frankly, it did work. 
okay, the other thing that you want to do is hang out with the people that are risk takers. I'm here to tell you, your company that you keep matters. It matters a whole lot because what happens, the people that you surround yourself with, they become like your support system, so to speak. And energy is contagious. It's just contagious. It, when you have people around, around you that are movers and shakers and doing things, that maybe you wish you could do. The more you hang around those people, the more you find yourself getting just, you know, just getting rid of some of those fears that you may have had. So hanging out with the right crowd is very, very important when you want to overcome things and come out of your comfort zone and learn to begin to take risks. The other thing is be real honest with yourself. Honesty is key. You know, when you're making an excuse about something, you know and only you know when you are making excuses. I know, I know. I remember uh, making an excuse of something I was supposed to do, and I had all of these reasons why I couldn't do it. And then later on, I had to laugh because deep down inside, I knew that they were excuses. I had to fess up. So you want to play full out with yourself because you can't get past the, this, this thing until you are honest with you. Because at the end of the day, it's always me, myself, and I. And what you tell yourself is what it is. So just definitely play honesty when it comes to you. Play full out. Don't hold back. Acknowledge when you are making excuses because we all do it and sometimes they stay really legitimate. But just know that it's an excuse, it's different from a real legitimate situation that's out of your control. The other thing I wanted to focus on is don't be so serious. You know, learn how to laugh at some of the stuff. I mean, some of the things that have happened to me over the last few years, you know, they were devastating when they were happening. But then at the end of the day, there wasn't anything I could do to undo it. So I might as well take something good from it and, and just not be so serious about it. Because everything that happens, you're going to learn something. That's, that's the wonder thing. Of course, sometimes learning hurts. It can be very painful in terms of how you feel and the different process that you might have to go through in order to move yourself through that period. But a lot of times you learn things when you start to get out of your comfort zone. It's just going to happen that way. And then the other thing, just have some fun. I'm here to tell you, make it fun. Make it fun. If you don't take anything else away from this conversation, just make it fun. Take the baby step. Just know you're going to fall on your face trying to change it. It's okay. All you have to do is get up, brush yourself off, give yourself a little chuckle, and keep it moving. And as everyone has said tonight, your mind is your biggest asset, and that is so, so, so true. Because whatever you think about is what it is. It's just that simple. Whatever you think about is what it is, and if it's real to you, then it's your truth. So I'm going to ask you, what do you want your truth to be? You know, and in order to get to that truth, you're going to have to move out of your comfort zone. There's no way of getting around it. And then one of the other tips that I almost forgot that's really key is get comfortable with discomfort. I actually read that somewhere in a uh, children's post. Uh, it was some kind of parenting thing I was reading, and it talked about teaching your children how to get com comfortable with discomfort. And at the time, I, you know, I kind of like, hmm, that's interesting. And then as I started to really dig into it, and, you know, I'm raising a kid myself, 
and understanding what that meant is that sometimes we are going to be in uncomfortable situations. It's not a perfect world, so we can always expect things to come at us one, two, three. Sometimes there's going to be a little discomfort. It's just the way that it is, you know. So now would be a great time to start wrapping your head around, you know, being okay with discomfort. So you're going to have that, especially if you're trying to build a business. Because that's one of the hardest things that to do in life is build a business. So depending on where you're coming from, what your dynamics are, what you're working with, it can be very difficult. It can be um, days in your life when belief, I always say, is not as big as a mustard seed, but you just keep going. You just keep moving forward with it. And you will be coming out of your comfort zone for sure because fear of taking risks, you will not survive in a business. And get help. Get the support you need. There's all kinds of people out there, coaches, I'm a life coach. I run an organization for women. And, you know, I'm, there's days when I'm up to like two o'clock in the morning, sometimes talking to ladies. So they might be going through something in their company. You know, just find somebody that will support you and put, support you in your walk, support you in your growth, and will not judge you. Because that's the, the huge thing. None of us can judge anybody because we're all going through something. I don't care who you see that might be the epitome of confidence, trust and believe they are going through something. Because you're not going to live on this earth and not. So that's just the reality of it. So I would love to, you know, for you guys to check out my show on the amazing Women and Men in Power. Uh, my show is Minding My Business 24-7, Moving at the Speed of God, Learning What We Didn't Know We Didn't Know. So we're always in that mode of learning what we didn't know we didn't know. You can also visit me at assistedcircle.org, which is our website, and meet some of the ladies uh, in, on, in the organization. And we spell sister, S-I-S-T-A-S. So the website is A-S-I-S-T is in Tom, A-S, circle.org. And you can also email me at assistedcircle at gmail.com. I am looking forward to supporting you. Please tune into my show, Just Minding My Business 24 7, every Thursday at 11 30 Central Time and 12 30 Eastern Time. And just to add another note, next week we're having a webinar called This Is a Sin. The information is on our website, and we would love for you to be our guest and learn in detail what the organization is doing, with how the women are growing within not only personally, but also in their businesses. And I just want to give a real a big shout out to Raven, who is a remarkable woman. I just met Raven a couple of months ago, and the first time we spoke, it was like we clicked immediately. And I'm, I'm just so happy that God brought her in my space and to be a part of this amazing network. So thank you so much for your time, and that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me just let Miss Raven know I'm done. I'm probably a little bit early, but it's okay. Technology, that's my other thing, guys. I've been in the computer field for over 30 years. Um, on my day job, I um, support the Associated uh, Jewish Federation of Maryland with IT support. So I've been doing that forever, and that's one of the gifts that I bring to the organization in terms of helping the ladies with their computers, any type of technology, and things of that nature. 
All right. All right. Good job. Hey, everyone. You are tuned in to the Amazing Women of Power and Men of Power Radio Network. Uh, tomorrow's Thursday, the business day. And Ida Crawford is one of our business hosts. Tell them about your show real quick again, Ida. Okay. Uh, my show is This Mind of My Business 24-7. And on my show, you will get mindset, you know, to help you get through your day-to-day business endeavors. You will also hear from people that I will be uh, interviewing that we will be touching on different areas in terms of giving you tools and resources that will further support you in your business. We're glad that you're here. You gave us a lot of great content. I want to remind you guys that you can come back and listen to this. Share us with your your friends. We're going to get ready to close out. Thank you so much, Ida. You were great. And I love the sister circle thing. You got that working for sure. All right, honey. Hey, everyone. This is Raven and Talk Show Maven. We're going to go ahead and close out right now. But we thank you so much. For, we so appreciate you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Reggie and Joe and Ida and Patricia for being our awesome, amazing women and men of power experts, icons, influencers, and definitely radio hosts. We appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, be sure to tune in every week, every single week, 24-7 to our positive programming network. We're all about positive programming. We're all about positive programming. And uh, I'm Raven, the talk show maven. Yeah, that's me. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Until then, that's a wrap. We'll see you next time.